we are continuing our series on the book of Habakkuk, one of the smallest minor prophets in the Old Testament. Only three chapters, and yet, today's message is titled, Live Life Inside Out. And our series is called, When the Solution is Worse Than the Problem. And that's what Habakkuk have experienced during this season in his life. Whenever he cried out to God, God seems to give him a response, and the response seems to be worse than the solution he anticipated. And that's what we read in the book of Habakkuk chapter 1 and chapter 2. Here is a prophet who is weeping, who is crying over his people, and God brings a solution, but he sends the Babylonians, which is worse than what he anticipated. The Babylonians who come to devour them, to steal of all of the things that they possessed, and to bring so much more calamity to the people of Judah. And as a result, we see Habakkuk confused, fearful uh, in the first two chapters. And we have looked at the various aspects of that in our previous episodes. But today we're going to come to an entirely different tone of voice from the prophet Habakkuk. Chapter 3 is a complete coming around the corner. It's like driving through the capital city of New Delhi. If you have ever driven in New Delhi, you know that it is a very confusing time driving through the traffics there. But when you come to the ring road to get out of the city, to go into one of the other cities that are surrounding New Delhi, for example, for me to drive from Delhi to come to Chandigarh, I come to the ring road and I hit the main road, the national highway to head towards Chandigarh, I am a free man. And I have come to a whole different experiences of driving compared to what I have experienced in New Delhi. And always you can be sure that somebody is going to bump into your car while you're driving in the city. But once you hit the national highway and you begin to drive towards my city, the Chandigarh city, you have the sense of peace in your heart. You know where you're going. You seem to have some direction. You seem to have hope. And you begin to put the praise and worship music in your car and just enjoy that ride all the way to Chandigarh. Book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, is a turning point from what Habakkuk was in the first two chapters. First two chapters, he is crying, he is weeping, he is complaining, he is debating with God, he is arguing with God, and God seems to give him a series of responses totally contrary to what he anticipated. But all of a sudden, something has changed. Well, it is not the people of Judah that have changed. It is not the people of Babylonians that have changed. But something happened to the man of God, prophet Habakkuk. There is some change that happened inside of Habakkuk that changed his circumstances. All of a sudden, he is seeing through a different glass. He is looking at his situation from a different perspective. And I believe this is what God is calling us in seasons of turmoil, in seasons of struggle, and in seasons of challenge, that when our circumstances don't seem to change, God wants to begin a work of change deep inside of us. And that's what book of Habakkuk shows us, that Habakkuk is now a changed man, and he's beginning to live a life inside out. When we begin to live a life from inside out, everything is different. Many years ago when I was in Bible school, our Bible school student body, we decided to have a fun day. And the focus of our chapel services was this very topic of living your life inside out. And so during this whole week, we decided that we will wear all our clothes inside out. Our trouser, our shirt, everything, we turned it around the other way around, and we wear it inside out uh, to affirm what God is speaking to us, that out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. And God wants to bring a change on the inside that will be seen to the people of the outside. Many times we have a mask that we put on our face and when people talk to us, everything seems to be fine and we have a, a smile on our face, but inside of us there is groaning. Inside of us there is a complaining. There is a, an attitudinal issue deep inside that is not changed. And as a result, everything that you touch seems to hurt. But when we begin to change like Habakkuk has done, we begin to experience a mighty change in the way we look at our situation. Let's look at what caused Habakkuk to begin to have this transformation on the inside that enabled him to live a life inside out. 
The first thing that changed Habakkuk is that he becomes a man of prayer. So far, he's been asking God, he's complaining, he's questioning, he's debating, but now he begins with a different tone to his prayer. He's beginning to recognize the power of God, the greatness of God, and who God is. Let's look at verse 2 of chapter 3. Here, prophet Habakkuk says, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy, O God. A different approach to the prayer that Habakkuk is praying. Here, he begins with the affirmation of the power of God and what God can do in any situation, in any circumstances, the mighty power of God. And Habakkuk is saying, God, I have heard of your fame. I have heard of your mighty deeds. And so, Lord, let your mighty deeds be repeated in my time. Do it in me, Lord. Do it in my time. Do it in my life. Hallelujah. And I'm sure all of us have experienced and all of us have heard the mighty work of God. All of us have heard testimonies of God's great work in the past. In the history of mankind, we have seen God do mighty deliverance. Hallelujah. We need to affirm this God in our life. And say to God, you are the God of Abraham. You are the God of Isaac. You are the God of David. You are the God of Daniel. You are the God of Moses. You are the God of Apostle Paul. You are the God of all the disciples that have served you and established your church in this world. And it is, oh God, the same God that you work through their life. Work through me, oh God. Do it in my time. Hallelujah. And when we pray like that, affirming the greatness of God, reminding God of how he has dealt in history, we remind God of how desperate we are once again for a visitation of God in our time. Hallelujah. We need to begin to cry out to God like that. When we pray for the nation of India, or when we pray for any unrich people groups, or when we pray for a mighty revival in our churches, or in our community, or in our city, wherever you are praying, we need to pray, oh God, do it in me, God. Do it now, oh God. I want to live to see the day, oh God, when you answer prayer. Hallelujah. I want to see your miracle work in my time of God. Hallelujah. Habakkuk is beginning to cry out to God, affirming the greatness of God, declaring his glory to the situation that he faces and says, Lord, do it in me. Do it in my time. Here is a desperate man with a desperate prayer. And many times we see in human history, God has caused a revival to happen or a breakthrough to come forth because of somebody who is desperate. Somebody who is on face with God and saying, God, unless you deal with this situation, unless you go with me, unless you deliver, unless you do this, uh, God, I'm going to seek your face. How desperate is our prayers today? Are we pressing into God? Are we really entering into an arena of pressing into God's presence with our intercession, with our supplication, with our prayers, with our cries to the presence of God? Hallelujah. I remember very clearly, whenever I stood before God, crying out to Him desperately, God has always moved in my circumstances. Like Habakkuk, May I encourage you today, no matter what your circumstances is, seek the face of God. Press into his presence and say, God, until and unless you deliver me, until and unless you heal me, I'm not going to leave your presence. I have heard of your fame. I have heard of your glory. Oh God, do it in me. Do it in my time. And let the prayer begin to make a change inside of you. Hallelujah. When we pray like that, there's a transformation on the inner man. The inner person will be changed. 
And when we pray like that, and we look at the circumstances, how bad they might be, we will begin to see some hope. We begin to see the glory of God manifesting in our circumstances. Amen. The greatest challenge in our life is not our family. The greatest challenge for us is not our church or our pastor or other people around us. The greatest challenge is the man that I see when I look at the mirror. The person that I'm looking at in the mirror, that's the person that needs to begin to experience the change. We need to begin to see change inside of us for God to begin a new work in us. The second thing that changed and transformed the inside of Habakkuk is that he now become a man of vision. He began with prayer, and from prayer, he moves into a zone of vision from God. And that's what we read from verse 3 of chapter 3. He began to see this vision of God. And God is once again reminding Habakkuk, Asif, to say, Don't you know me? Don't you know what I can do? Don't you see my power? I'm trying to show you who I am really. And now, when Habakkuk sees this vision of what God is going to do to the people of Judah, and how he's going to bring the deliverance for the people, he sees this vision of God. He sees this vision of this God who is intervening and who is performing these mighty acts. Hallelujah. God is able to reveal himself to us. Even in the most darkest hours of life. When we present to God. Hallelujah. Somebody said there is a bright ray of hope at the end of the tunnel. There is a bright ray of hope as long as you are keeping your eyes on the captain of your salvation. As long as you are looking at Jesus, there is always hope at the end of the tunnel. Here prophet Habakkuk is now seeing a vision of what God is going to do. And God came from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Puran. His glory covered the heavens and His praise filled the earth. Hallelujah! How much do we need to know that? How much do we need to affirm who God is and what God is going to do? Hallelujah! Let's not become wary of those evil workers. Let's not become fearful of the evil that is happening in the society out there. Let's not be driven by fear of those things that are happening against us or the persecution that is happening against the church. Hallelujah. God is going to take victory over them all. He is going to reign. God is going to rule. And the Bible says the glory of the Lord will fill the earth as the waters covers the sea. That is the promise of God to you and me. No matter what is happening in the world today, let me assure you, Jesus is coming back. He is going to come as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is going to establish His reign and His rule. And the Bible says upon the reign of His kingdom there will be no end hallelujah he shall reign he will reign and this earth will be filled with the glory of God prophet Habakkuk receives this vision of God's glory covering this earth in the midst of the Babylonians still robbing them still raping their women still stealing about all the wealth that is around them nothing has changed still things are going wrong and yet God is showing the future of what he is going to do and that's why the Bible says without vision the people perish for you and I to live in this dark and gloomy world today we need a vision of who God is. We need a vision of what God will accomplish through us in our times and in our world. Hallelujah. God will reign. He will be triumphant. He will declare His glory over this world. And finally, 
Habakkuk is now saying in verse 13 onwards, he's saying, you came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of the wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. With his own spear, you pierced his head. When his warriors stormed out to scatter us, glorying as though about to devour the wretched who are in hiding. You triumph the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. How many verbs are being used here by Habakkuk? It says, you came out, you saved, you crushed. And he goes on to say, you are the one, O God. Now, Habakkuk is saying, God, there is no other redeemer. There is no other savior. There is no other deliverer for our people. But, O oh God, you alone. Because you have revealed yourself to us in this vision. Hallelujah. Do you have a vision of what God is going to do through your life? Don't be discouraged. Don't be disappointed. Maybe your husband is still an alcoholic. Maybe your child is going into drug addictions. Maybe your son is sitting in the jail. I don't know what your circumstances is. Maybe there is somebody listening who is having a sickness of cancer in your body. Have a vision of God and how God is going to deliver you from your affliction and how God himself will destroy the wicked from the head just as God has done for the people of Judah. Hallelujah. Prophet Habakkuk, I'm not sure how long he lived and whether he lived to see the day of victory, but we know for sure God has raised up his men to deliver the people of Judah. God has raised up a man, a king, who would come and establish the kingdom and restore everything that was stolen from the people of Judah. A portion king of all, King Atasaurus, well, uh, came into to the nation of Judah to, to deliver and to bring everything back from Babylonians and, and bring it back to restore for the people of God. Hallelujah. There is a deliverer. There is a savior. There is a healer. There is a mighty miracle working God that is bringing that deliverance for you if you receive that vision from God. But that vision comes when we begin to pray and see God's face. From this vision we see two things. Number one, God will destroy everyone who opposes him and his plan. God will destroy everyone who oppose God's plan. No matter how strong uh, they are, no matter how tormenting they are seemingly at the moment. Remember when Al-Qaeda came into power and Bin Laden was rise, a breathing murder on the poor people that surrounded him, the minorities and those people that he could persecute. And we saw how God bring his judgment and destroyed them, the entire Al-Qaeda. Today we have the ISIS that is breathing murder on the poor, innocent women children and the minorities in those regions. But let me assure you, my God is a God who will destroy everyone who opposes God and his plan. And so let me assure you, no matter what is coming against you, how hard the enemy is coming against you, God will wipe them all out. And number two, we see the divine determination of God to bring justice and righteousness to the people who are oppressed. God is determined to bring a resolution for your problems. Our God is a determined God. Hallelujah. The God of Habakkuk is my God and he's your God today. And so first of all, Habakkuk enters into a zone of prayer. And then he moves from the prayer zone into the zone of vision. And this vision is changing him on the inside. And now the third zone is the zone of testimony. Here he is testifying of what he has decided to do and his commitment to the Lord. This is the testimony of prophet Habakkuk in verse 16. Habakkuk says, I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. And yet 
I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Here, the testimony of Habakkuk and how he experienced and what he experienced and his testimony is this, that I will wait for God to move. I'm not going to interfere. There is nothing I want to do to interfere, to change the plan and purpose of God. I'm going to wait on God. Hallelujah. I'm going to let God handle the circumstances. Many times we want to take circumstances into our own hands. Many times we want to forcefully bring about the change to the situation we find ourselves. Let me assure you, if you and I try to do, it won't be anywhere near good as what God can do. And so I encourage you to just let go of your circumstances. Let God handle your situation and wait for the fulfillment of his promise. And so Habakkuk testifies, yes, God, I will wait. And secondly, he says to God, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the wines, though the olive crops fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Hallelujah. This is the commitment of Habakkuk. For the people of Israel in those times, this was the primary source of their income. The olives and the grapes and the cattle and the sheep for the people of Judah. And now Habakkuk is saying, even if I have none of those, how many of us have trust and confidence in God so much? that we don't care about the material possessions of this life that will fade away. But we have hope in the eternal God who will be there for us, bringing that deliverance, not only for now, but for eternity. Hallelujah. We need to have our vision set on a higher plane. On a higher ground, we need to keep our eyes focused. It was this kind of a vision, like that of Habakkuk, that apostle Paul had in his life. That's why even though he was persecuted, even though he was beaten up, even though he faced shipwreck, even though he was thrown in prison and awaiting to be martyred, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say to you, rejoice. I remember an old Sunday school song. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. How can we sing this song? How can we rejoice in the midst of tragedy? How can we rejoice in the midst of chaos and confusion? We can rejoice when our eyes are set on God, like prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk says, this is my commitment. This is my testimony. I will rejoice in my God. And we see in the end of this book, the Bible says God gave Habakkuk a feet like the deer's feet. How many of you have seen the feet of a donkey? You have seen how the donkey walk. And sadly, many people walk like the donkeys walk. Their feet hardly moves any higher from the ground, kind of dragging along. But the Bible says, a man who is in prayer, a man who has a, a vision from God, a man who is possessed by a testimony, the Lord will give him a feet like the deer's feet. The deer is never afraid of any bush or rocks or mountains or thorns along the way. The, the deer is always ready to leap over every circumstances. I pray today that no matter what your situation is, that you will move from your complacency, your complaining, your bittering, your murmuring, and your anger to a, a zone of prayer. And you move from the zone of prayer to a vision of God. And from that vision, you will come into an agreement with God in your testimony. Yes, God, do it. I will wait patiently for you. Yes, God, I will rejoice in you no matter what my circumstances are. God is going to give you a DSV. Would you trust him today? Would you call on this God today? Like Habakkuk, would you come to God and say, God, I've heard 
of your fame i've heard of your glory do it in me god do it now would you look to god in prayer with me as i pray for you right now father in the name of jesus i pray for every listeners everyone who is tuning into this message right now no matter what their circumstances is like habakkuk or god I pray oh God that they will have a vision of you and what you have done in the past and father they will have a burden from you oh God for times like this that you will move in our season in our lifetime oh God we will see your breakthroughs oh God Lord I pray that you will take us into a zone of a vision of who you are and what you will do oh God in our lives affirming that you are still on the throne affirming Lord that you are still in control of every circumstances i pray oh god that you will give everyone a faith like the deer's faith that is able to overcome every hurdle every obstacle that come along the way even though our circumstances may not have changed for now i pray that you begin to bring that change inside of us that we can begin to live a life inside out i pray your blessing upon every family every individual oh god in jesus mighty name i pray God bless you.